Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Conquest of the Crystal Palace, brought to us by Asmic and Quest. Conquest of the Crystal Palace is one of the first games that the developer Quest worked on. They would go on to develop the games in the Ogre Battle series. This is a great action platformer for the NES, it's been largely forgotten. There was a few new cool power-ups that were added to the game, and a few things that made the game very unique, along with a great soundtrack. Here we go with Conquest of the Crystal Palace for the NES. We start off with a little bit of a story sequence before we get into the game. So in Conquest, you play as a prince of a fallen kingdom, who was taken away by his guardian dog Zap in order to eventually survive, get stronger, and then come back and seek revenge and take back his kingdom. So our job is to defeat the evil King Zerus. At the beginning of the game, you can select one of three crystals. One that gives you more health right away, one that gives you more attack right away, or one that allows you to jump higher. Of the three choices, I think the attack is more beneficial than the others. You can get the boost to the health, as well as the jump shoes, from shops in the game, as well as a few drops from enemies. So you can still buy those other power-ups, you just don't have them all the time. In the game, you can see by defeating enemies, not only do they drop certain power-ups, but they also drop money on a consistent basis. You'll have to use the money in order to buy items from shops. There's usually two shops per stage, and there's five stages in the game. One thing you'll have to get used to pretty early on in Conquest of the Crystal Palace is the jumping and attack motion. When you jump in the air and unleash an attack with your sword, you end up falling straight back down. So this can get a little bit tricky when you're trying to attack enemies in mid-jump, and may take a time or two to get used to that. When we reach the top of this mountain, we run into Kim for the first time. Kim is the keeper of the shop and will of course sell us items, but she also has little news segments called QNN, which will give you hints on either levels or bosses on the particular stage that you're in. At the top here, I'm buying the Spring Shoes, which is the equivalent of if you picked the crystal at the beginning, however the Spring Shoes don't stay with you forever. The spring shoes, as well as all the other weapons that you can pick up from enemies and well as buy, only last for a period of time. You'll hear an annoying beeping sound for a couple seconds to signify that your item's running out. To change your weapon though, you have to hold down and then press the B button in order to select what you want to use. Whether or not you select Zap, in which case he'll come on screen and start attacking enemies. And you can also select your other attack, as well as you can go back to your sword, which is actually the middle option at the bottom, which we cannot select right now since we're using the sword. Coming up is the second shop if you want to buy some more items. Every shop is different. They have different items as well as different prices for each of the items, and the items get more expensive the later you get into the game. 
When working your way up this mountain, you can jump straight up into the air without going to the next platform, causing sometimes for the rock that's gonna spawn next to appear on the screen. You can then see what way it's rolling down the mountain, and then work your way up the platform accordingly. This platform can be really annoying because it's going to be hard to get onto the platform without running into that golem. The game does have a little bit of an annoying knockback. Not nearly as bad as Ninja Gaiden, but still rather annoying and it's going to cause you to fall into pits sometimes accidentally. The good news is, unlike Ninja Gaiden, you won't lose a life by falling into most of the pits throughout the game. Instead, you'll just lose a little bit of health and end up spawning back at the beginning of the area. When we make it to the top of this mountain, it's time for our first boss battle of the game. We have these two guardians, one that flies and one on the ground with a shield. You have to jump behind the one on the ground and take him out first, because the one flying won't be nearly as bad once we take out the one on the ground. You can hit him back and forth until he starts charging, in which case you're going to have to wait for him to send his charge up to the guy flying, in which case a lightning bolt will then come down wherever the guy's flying, so make sure you're not under him when the lightning bolt connects. Once he's taken care of, the normal guy flying will just fly back and forth, diving after a few seconds, giving you an opportunity to do a quick jump in the air and do a slash. It'll only take three or four hits to defeat him, and you complete stage number one. Level 2 takes place in the shrine, and we start off with some bat enemies that drop bombs. If you walk past them fast enough and they drop the bomb, they won't be able to hit you with it. Or, if you stop in front of them and just wait for them to fly overhead, they'll drop the bomb just in front of you and also won't be able to hit you. When, when climbing upstairs in this level, be sure to be careful because there's going to be different rocks and other objects coming up from behind you, as well as later on, we're going to have arrows coming down to try to hit us in the head. Thankfully with those though, we'll be able to actually either jump over them or duck on the stairs for them to go overhead. In the shop this time, I will be buying the potion, which you can see takes my health meter from being almost full to now being completely full and I can get full health now. Be careful to wait for the spikes to fall and start going back up into the ceiling before you make your way over to each platform that they're on. Right here I summon Zap for the first time, and you can see he jumps around the room attacking all the enemies on screen. He can also be heard just like you can, so if he gets low on health you may want to call him back. You can buy health for him from the shop, so if he gets too low. Here's the mini-boss for this stage. We start off with fighting the dog, and he jumps back and forth over our head. You can either try to hit him and walking back and forth left to right and causing him to jump over your head so he misses you, slashing him every time he jumps. Next up, we have to fight his master, which is a little bit harder because he's a little bit more sporadic with his movements. Just keep attacking with him, even if he hits you a few times. You should be able to defeat him way before he defeats you. These enemies are a real pain. Not only can they hit you when they're moving back and forth in the ground, they unleash these ghost hands, which kind of latch onto you and stop you from being able to jump. You want to get through the area with them as fast as possible. They are absolutely probably the most annoying enemy in the entire game. These gray enemies move rather slowly once you start attacking them, and it takes a good amount of hits to defeat them, but doing so will net you a good amount of money. One of the snowflake enemies that I defeated dropped this sword upgrade I just picked up, which unleashes a couple of waves every time you swing your sword, and it does a lot of damage to enemies.
the Dog Whistle can be used to send Zap in kind of more of a rage, and he'll do more damage for a period of time. After we leave the shop, you want to fall into not the next pit, but the pit after that. It'll take you to a secret area where you can save a princess who's locked up in a cage. This enemy can be a little bit of a pain, but just keep hitting them in the back 